best friends. We would hang out every day after school. We were playing around at first. We were just hanging out, playing with the dogs. Then he was just kind of laughing. Just having a good time. My mom wasn't home because she was working. He was looking for something. I came out and said, hey, look at this. He got the gun out, I took it. Why did you want to get the gun? I wanted to show it to him, that was all. Say anything about whether the gun was real or not? Yes, he told me it wasn't real. It didn't seem to look real. He said, let me do it, let me do it. I'm guessing he was trying to figure out if it was actually real. And he handed it to me. He was just kind of laughing and pointing it. Did you hear one? He was like messing with the trigger and stuff. Hello? I was standing right in front of him. He was getting into the car, but he didn't believe me. Yes, okay, so where are they shot? They've been told they've been shot in the shoulder. Okay, are you with them? I feel like the whole ground was shaking. I didn't know what to do. And what happened after you pulled the trigger? I thought I wouldn't have fired if it wasn't real. Are they in the house? Yes, they're in the house. Was it intentional? Can you talk to me? Was this person? Can you tell me who's been shot? Who's been shot? Why did a bang? I was really scared. Right, the person inside the residence has been shot. Put pressure on the wall. My best friend. He was saying, "Call, call 911. Call 911." Sir, so clean it up and put pressure. And from there, tragedy unfolded. Come before Lindsay Cohen joins us live from 11th Street in Puyallup, where the shooting took place. Lindsay. Yeah, Mary, tonight police still believe this was accidental and unintentional. It was a little after 4, because um, school got out at about 3.30, and uh, the police came to my job. I had just gotten home around 4 o'clock, and my brother still isn't home yet. A simple show and tell led to the gunfire. Uh, it appears he didn't believe it was real and fired the, fired the shotgun over through. One of the guns was not locked up. It was behind our bed. I don't know why. I, do you know which one? The shotgun. Is that for safety, maybe? Yeah. Possi possibly from my, my husband's perspective, it was safe. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I don't know why it wasn't locked up. You, don't, you didn't know if it was loaded or not? No, I, I didn't know if it was loaded or not. And they told me, do you have any children? I said, Jose and Eddie. And they said, well, we're here about Eddie. There's been an accident. Eddie was shot. I said, well, where is he? And, they said, well, he's at the hospital, but he didn't make it. And I just started screaming. I received a phone call. I could hear my aunt screaming in the background. She was saying, they killed him, they killed him. I was like, who are you talking about? And she was like, Eddie, who killed Eddie? And then the phone just dropped. So my son came home and he sat me down. He said, Mom, something happened to Eddie Z. And I said, what do you mean? How does a child get shot by a friend from school? People just leave guns around for children to shoot children? Something's got to be done. This is happening too much. We begin breaking news tonight out of Goldsboro. A seven-year-old airlifted to ECU Health Medical Center after being shot by an eight-year-old relative. An Elkhart family is grieving tonight after their 15-year-old child was accidentally shot to death over the weekend. 16-year-old Shakori Smith died last month after police say a 15-year-old friend accidentally shot him. A two-year-old is dead after finding a gun. This is now the third accidental shooting involving a child since a Friday. A six-year-old student shot a teacher with a Just handgun. Just this week, an Indiana toddler caught on a doorbell camera playing with a gun like it Tyler was Tyler Ellis, you see here, is the second teen from the school lost to gun violence in the last month. Something I never want to relive ever again. I, go to, I get that phone call in my mind every single day. Go home and look at your own kids in the eye and think, would I want that to happen to them? Because it could happen. Their son Christian was shot in the chest while at a friend's house where a gun was not locked up. In 2018, Kristen Song lost her 15-year-old son, Ethan. Ethan Song was shot to death at the home of another teen boy. Police say no adult was present. The ER doctor looked at me and said, this is Song, your son is unrecognizable. He was shot in the head. And my fear is if you see him in that condition, that you will never return 
from the darkness. It's no secret, gun violence in the United States continues to grow. Guns are the number one killer of children in the United States. More than car accidents, more than cancer. We can't just stand by. We can't let it happen any longer. This is the corner where I dropped off my son in the morning for school the last time that I saw him. I wonder, did they walk on the street? Did they walk? Oh, my heart just starts racing. I can't stand the thought of it. I can't stand the thought of it. That's the house. Keep your guns safe, keep your people safe. The new motto advocates are using to promote safe storage of firearms. We want gun owners to store their firearms safely, locked and away from ammunition. New technology makes securing guns easier than ever. Pop open, can be opened by pin code, biometrics and keys. This is about kid safety. We want to keep kids safe. There's no reason uh, a user should not keep his gun safe. A Witten, South Dakota family has an important message to parents after their three-year-old son accidentally shot himself. You lock up your guns. There's no, absolutely no reason to have a loaded gun within a kid's reach. Children who are killed or injured by unsecured guns, those aren't accidental deaths. Accident implies that there was nothing the gun owner could have done. I think most people agree that if you, if you own a gun, it should be properly and securely stored. I watched my little boy's life leave his body. If I had taken the extra step to put it in a lockbox or a safe or one of these $1.50 gun locks on my pistol, my son would still be here. A new study says thousands of young lives could be saved if adults took proper care of their weapons. And there is a growing movement to lock up parents who don't lock up their guns. Ethan's law says that if you own a gun and have children in the house, you've got to keep the guns and ammunition away from that child. We need to start sending a very, very strong message that if you leave your guns around and children can gain access, there will be consequences. State lawmakers want to require guns be locked up when they're not in use, arguing the law will save lives. The majority of Americans do want something done on this issue. This is Brian G, NRA, speaking in opposition to this bill. There are many other items around the house that cause injury, illness, or death to a child. I mean, really, what's the difference, especially if cars are 35 times more likely to cause an accidental death? Actually, in Washington state last year, more people were killed by guns than by cars. shotgun. It is a synthetic stock with Realtree AP camo. That's what That's the gun, right? It's the Daily Shooter here. Just wanted to come to you today with a review of the Mossberg 500 Phantom. This is a youth model. A youth model. Everywhere else and in all other areas of life, we choose to protect our kids, but not in this one area. And to me, it's all about money. America's merchants of gun death are not concerned about child safety or adult safety or anything other than getting rich. 15-year-old boy shot and killed at a friend's house. It was just four days ago Shadrach Hall Turner lost his life far too soon. A six-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy. Two lives cut short in one month in Paulding County due to accidental shootings. A five-year-old shot and killed at her grandparents' home. 
And NRA is in all these pockets of legislators, and that is disgusting. You know, the greed of the gun lobbies and the manufacturers is obvious, but the cowardice and the selfishness of the legislators, you'd like to get each one of them in a room, just one by one, and say, what's more important to you? If you could vote for some good gun safety laws, would you do that if it saved one kid? Or is your job and your money so important to you that you would say, screw the kid? Okay. Okay, hey, I'll help you. No. No? Okay. There you go. You did it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you know, I always think about all the things. All the things that, you know, I'm going to miss. He was a hugger, kisser. Every night he would come to my bed. He's like, time to cuddle. Hi. Hi there. Hi. That's, that's, I miss a lot. I miss that. All right, we'll see everybody at the gun show. Nearly half of guns in this country are not locked away properly and guns accidentally kill kids in the U.S. 10 times more often than any other developed country in the world. It's real people that it's happening to, not just something you hear on the news. Year after year, we see kids get killed, little kids get killed. Hopefully this will get a good message across. I already know of people that now they lock up their guns when they never even thought about it before. Just such a small thing to do to save a life. Kids are curious. I've been teaching for 25 years. I know the curiosity. And why would we ever blame our children for being who they are? It's our responsibility. It was just unbelievable to me that my son is gone and no one is held accountable. New information on that deadly school shooting outside of Detroit by a 15-year-old sophomore. When you obtained the firearm, it was not kept in a locked container or a safe. Yes, it was not locked. He's got an active shooter. Several people down. He's actually shooting. He's in the art room. We got shots fired right now, guys. Pogorchis came to school this morning armed with his father's shotgun and 38 revolver. School shooters get their weapons from home more often than you might think. 76% of the time, a firearm used in a mass shooting was obtained either from a student's home or a relative or a friend's home. And in nearly half of those school shootings, the gun used was not secured or stored by its owner. I've got in this room, actually, a 20-gauge single-shot shotgun right here. And I have them sitting here in the room, out, exposed. Why? So I can go do what I need to do kill things, because that's what guns are for. And you're saying if I leave my 20 gauge or 22 sitting out, and I have a 12 year old son, and I don't have that locked up, that is straight up bullshit. The NRA thinks this is asking too much of gun owners. New safes open at the speed of a smartphone. It is our job to protect our children from themselves. Following Ethan's death in 2018, the Song family successfully lobbied for a Connecticut state law strengthening requirements around safe storage of firearms in homes. Voters passed an extensive gun reform initiative last night. Washington state approved one of the toughest gun safety laws in the nation. A gun owner can be criminally responsible if their gun gets into the wrong hands and a crime is committed with it. The state's first firearm safe storage law makes it a crime if gun owners do not secure loaded weapons in the presence of children under the age of 16. You may have heard me refer to this as Christian's law. He died at the age of 15 years old at a sleepover. Public Safety Committee Chair Kevin Payne of Peoria will not give the bill a hearing. There are teenagers, there are people with mental illness who could end up in houses where guns aren't stored properly. Can you see that perspective you, and what would you say? If you have a situation like that, deal with it. Last year has been a nightmare for my family and me as we had to live through this overwhelming loss due to gun violence. Today, Representative Pamela Herndon announced they will be trying to pass the Benny Hargrove Gun Safety Act again in the next legislative session.
Based on the information and evidence I have received, today I am announcing charges against the shooter's parents. Ethan Crumbly's parents are each charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors say gross negligence makes them partially responsible for their son's 2021 rampage. 16-year-old Jalen Wiley was shot and killed at Great Mills High School in St. Mary's County in 2018. The 17-year-old student who killed her used his father's gun. Almost five years to the day of her death, the Maryland Senate passed the bill bearing her name. New at noon, a new push to get Ethan's law passed on the federal level. I promise that I would fight for every child that is confronting gun violence. We need to get it done because of an epidemic of children getting their hands on weapons. The tragedies are preventable. That's why it's critical to pass Ethan's law. Congress is complicit in that bloodshed if it fails. Regardless of where you stand on the gun issue, I think we can all agree that guns should be stored safely and out of the reach of kids. We need leaders who have the courage to act. Mothers are losing children, and it's got to be stopped somehow. It shouldn't be that difficult of a decision to make to protect our children when it comes to guns. It is my hope that it's speaking out today motivates just one person to secure their gun. My son, Eddie Z. Holmes' life would not have been taken in vain.